Hello, Dave. Hello. So uh, we're doing something a little bit different slightly, uh, this week. Month, slightly, rather. slightly different today. So um, what what we well, this is a little. These are turning up all over the internet at the moment. It's an analog synthesizer. Uh, depending on where you get it, it's between twenty-five and thirty quid to buy one. Oh, okay. For a proper analog synthesizer, it's got a proper Moog-style ladder filter in it. It makes all kinds of incredible noises, but its one drawback is you can only play it with this stylus. Um, so it's like a turbocharged stylophone. Yeah, yeah, yes, it's like a stylophone plus. So what we're going to do is put a couple of little sockets into one so you can control it from an analog sequencer. And if you've got one of these, a Korg SQ1, it will run from, from one of those, so then you can time it to everything else. Great, and the SQ1 is relatively inexpensive as well. Yeah, those are, those are cheap as well, those are about 70 quid, so it's, um, and um, um, for the price, very good. So we're going to hack the mainframe of the Gacken. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, we mod the Gacken. Brilliant, okay. Right. So, here's one I haven't prepared earlier. This is, um, this is how it comes in the box um, with it. Now, in actual fact, the most basic mod, all you need is a couple of bits of sellotape. Because um, what you're doing is your control voltage actually goes down this pole here, which is the bit you swipe there, which meant if you just attach that there, so you've got some kind of an earth connection, and just put that on there. It, whoops, that one's tuned a long way down. Taking it apart is easy. It's just four screws in the four corners. <laughs> Right, this really is the easiest mod in the world. All you've got to do is you need a little socket which you attach between this point here where the wire connects because that, that just goes through there and is screwed on there. And you need a good earth point and a nice easy earth point is that this battery here and apart from that all you have to do is drill a hole through the side the case actually drills really easily um, although I recommend drilling a small pilot hole first and then a bigger hole to take the actual thing. But you can see you've got plenty of space in there. Put a couple of one nicely in the middle there. Yes. Take that back and <laughs> Should be the right size. And yeah, that will go in. Now, ideally, um, if you've gone out and, and, and bought yourself a socket, you've bought yourself a mono socket. This is actually a stereo one, um, which doesn't really, really make any difference. You just got to know, work out which of the three prongs you don't want which I happen to know is that one and bend it out the way um, so you're connecting your negative to this end which is connected to there and your positive that goes to there from that one there that goes to the tip of your plug so 
So, screw that in there. Tighten it up. And then you need some wire. Um, I use old telephone wire, uh, which is free. Um, <laughs> it's good to use to, yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Just go down the exchange. <laughs> go down the, well, well, in actual fact, if you go down to your local telephone exchange and ask, they will give you huge bundles of free wire because they don't, they're changing it all at the moment oh, okay um so we get huge amounts of wire for them for various things so yeah you hook that through the little one there Hello. get the soldering iron solder that onto there <laughs> That's someone at the door. Okay, so that was the uh, telephone yeah. exchange council. <laughs> so, so yes, yeah, so, to, to recap, you solder that, you answer the door, <laughs> and then you cut off a length of wire. Switch it back a bit. And then, now this bit you don't actually have to solder because you're connecting it where that screw is there. So all you have to do is loosen that off, hook it under there, and tighten it up again. And that's your first connection. Great. So this one is this, but this bypasses the. Um... This uh, this is actually bypassing that. Yeah. What it means is, I mean, this is going to break sooner or later. Yeah. But it does mean that um, you can find it, well, when it goes, you can just find it, uh, chop that off, find yourself an old stylophone controller or anything else metal you can stick a plug on and just plug it into there oh, okay. and it'll work. So you can just, um, you can, if you like, take that out, stick a plug on it and just use it on there. Because when you're using it via a sequencer, it's, this won't work. So you could just un un unplug it when it's not in use, which will leave you all this space here to put in all kinds of other goodies in the future. Drill some more holes. Drill some more holes. Yeah. Right, having done that one, we will make it a different colour wire. You then need an earth connection. Oh, this is the one that's going to connect to the battery. Terminal. Yeah. Okay. So that one goes on that end there. Solder that, that on there. Then you want to take your wire round this a bit. It doesn't matter if it's too long, but if you're not careful, you can get it going across your batteries, which is a real pain. So just cut yourself enough to go neatly round all that lot. Oh, yeah, I can see how you could accidentally solve that in place and then not be able so, to do it. So, yeah, 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 yes, is that right? So, take it nicely round. There's a nice bit on the back here you can solder. There are lots of other points you can solder to, but if you're not, the, the, the way we're doing it, if you're not used to doing stuff like this, there's nothing you can damage with too much heat, there's nothing you can melt. So, th this is a nice, safe way of doing it. Just put that round the spring. Whoops. Put the patch 
three back in. Best to try it out before you put all the screws back in, just in case you've got something wrong. That should now, that should still work. We've got that turned down a bit. It is nice at its base end, but it doesn't work in its little screw. As we could just plug it in, couldn't we? So that will. Yeah, depending on different ones, the tuning range of that seems to be different from... Help if I plugged it in the right socket. So now, if you take a control voltage out from there and put it into there, it will... Oh. to set your sequencer up um, it's not a standard control voltage you won't get you won't it, it's not the, that 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 accurate uh, most people are used to kind of one octave per volt or whatever this is half an octave per volt but it doesn't start until you get to two and a half volts it's got a, so only um, basically on your sequencer you have Ha have to, to set it to the 5 volt level um, and these will only work once you're above half um, the other thing is it's not got um, w w w without some more complicated work it, it, it doesn't have a gate or, or a trigger except through the same thing um, so this has to drop below two and a half volts and then it re-triggers. Re, re um, now the practical way around that is you can put in another socket in, in parallel with that and then it will put that on there. So that, and that then um, the act, um, so you set set that to five volts. You want this. The best you can set on this is linear. It's slightly irritating that it's not actually a proper analog sequencer. So your sound actually goes up in steps. It's um. If we put one on, we did that. Okay. And linear. So you, you might not always get exactly the note you want, but it will put it in time with anything else. So, yes, I won't do it now, but the next thing to do is to just drill in another hole there, put in a second socket, just wire between the two, and then th that'll get that'll give you both. Um, and that is um, there are lots of other things you can do, um, which if anyone one one's interested, we could do more of another time. Um, something I'd like is I'd like a fine tuner on the top. Uh, which is fairly straightforward. It's a reasonably straightforward job just to... Um, the um, um, It's got a square and triangle wave LFO that only goes to the pitch. Um, it would be very simple to actually reroute that via a switch so it could go to the filter instead. Um, and also, it should be possible, um, although I've not worked out how yet, to take a gate pulse, pulse to, to trigger um, um, to trigger the filter envelope separately. Um, 
which would be fun. But Great. that's um, and if you accidentally break it, it only costs you about twenty five. Yeah, anyway, yeah, so. right. And that, to to be honest, it's it's such a simple job. I mean, it's um, even if you've never used a soldering iron, if you've never used a soldering iron, it's an ideal first job because there really isn't anything much you can go wrong. Um, it's actually probably the scariest bit is drilling the hole in the case. <laughs> it's um. Because um, yes, you're only connecting to your sockets there, which, if you mess up, that is only going to cost you twenty p. Um, um, you, you've got a screw terminal there, which is the only place you're actually attaching to the board. You've got a screw terminal, and you've got a nice big bit of metal to solder to there. Um, Easy peasy. So it is very straightforward. Um, so the only other thing is, don't lose the screws. Thank you.